Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. We are down here in Vero Beach, Florida in a retirement community. This is a mobile home park that, you know, 55 and older. And we are just, you know, half a mile from the intercoastal, you know, three quarters of a mile from the Atlantic Ocean. And these homes, when a hurricane comes, of course, this area gets hit really hard. And what I wanted to do today was to, we're going to put in some drain here. Um, to help collect a lot of the water, sump pump, and discharge it. But I just wanted to show you that no matter where you live, no matter where it is, I feel so confident in what we do that it will work. And it's getting ready to rain if you can hear that thunder. So you might get to see it, you might get to see it work here in a little bit. But let's take a look. This particular home um, is down in the bowl. In other words, all of the land around here is all higher. It's probably a foot and a half higher all the way around. So when it rains hard, what happens is water pours and she started to dig a trench, but it, you know, digging a trench is great, but it has to go someplace. Otherwise it's just filling up with water. But what happens is water comes across, fills up and goes underneath of that awning, you know, underneath the skirt, underneath of the home. And there's a lot of utilities that get flooded out. Granted, um, you know, when power goes out, some pumps don't work, but for the most part, power is restore, restored quite quickly. In this particular park, everything's underground, so power usually stays on fairly well. And we're starting back there where you see the piece of peanut pipe over there on the side. We bring, bring that trench all the way around with some catch basins. And here's all the utilities. You know, you can see them all over there. We have to dig across the utilities, um, coming around, and we'll put a sump pump right over there. We already put it in there yesterday, so it's all good to go. That was just temporary, and discharge it, you know, all the way out to the front. Okay, so we're just a few minutes into the the um, excavation, and I kind of want to show you. You can see all the tree roots here. There must have been an old tree. Pretty normal. Sometimes you have a sewer and it's leaking tree was just overgrown. You can see the giant tree roots. A lot of old cable. Lots and lots. You don't know really which one's which. It was marked. And they say this one is the live one. So we've carefully followed that over to the box. And we'll be able to go around that. But when, you, when you're digging in uh, a tree rooted area, you're almost positively gonna find stone and it makes it so difficult. So what you have to do is what I'm doing here. We expose the trench. Next, we'll take the mattock, the ax, and we'll go through this. We've gotta go under that sewer line and of course it's just wrapped with roots, but that's all it is, it's just surf surface roots. Once you get underneath of those, your digging is quite easy. Don't get frustrated, just keep digging, take your time, you'll get it. So to give you the example of what I'm talking about, here's the sewer line. We've got to go under that and you can see the stone. This was the old sewer line, but just a stone like this, you can't sink your shovel down at all. It just, you know, bounces off. So you've got to pull out all the rocks. There's lots of them, just little rocks and you know, the clay, sand, whatever you're digging through, it makes it doubly tough. But again, you can see the rock you can do this and this took me about five minutes just to get underneath of here it does force our line to go a little deeper but hey as the excavator your job is to make sure that you've got proper flow to wherever you're discharging in this case it's a sump pump but we're getting there so let's keep on digging okay dealing with the tree roots you know again there was a tree no doubt over there in the low spot and you know, probably all kinds of trees, you can see them all around here. Remember, palms put out lots of roots. Don't think that they don't. But let's take a look. I just scraped it off so you could see tree roots. They don't look bad, but they're a matted mess. You know, they're all through our trench. And again, they're right on the top of where we're going. We're going right over there to the sump pump. So let me show you what you do. Again, keep your smile. <laughs> So dealing with tree roots, it can be a, you know, just a real nightmare because you get so frustrated, but keep your smile and I promise you that you'll get through these. Let's go ahead. I'm going to show you how to do it. You know, just using the shovel and it's real important that you have a good shovel. You hardly ever see us use a wooden handled shovel. Um, you're going to spend 25 to $30 for a decent shovel, 
you've got to have one if you're going to dig. So let's take a look at what we do to get through these roots. So I'm just going to do it with one hand holding the camera just to show you. Make sure that when you cut the root that you're over into the, you know, the side of your trench. That cuts right through there. You can see that. Same thing on the other side. Now we're able to dig down a little deeper. Remember there is gravel down here. That makes it even harder. But go ahead and just keep you know, digging until you get down deep enough. It'll get softer and softer. Bigger roots like this one, which makes a long uh, ways across your trench. You can just pry it up and possibly it'll break, but that one's not. It's pretty live and you can see it goes way over here. So we wanna make sure that when we cut it, Almost got it. Yep. One hand and a good shovel. When you cut it, make sure that you're all the way across the trench. And that way it'll come right out. Good shovel. <laughs> Making it look really hard, but it's not. <laughs> there we go. So it took me, what, 10 strokes with one hand. But you can see... We pulled out the whole entire root out of the trench. A couple more roots to cut. I'm going to use both hands. It is a lot easier. And we'll get right through here. You can see I went under the sewer line. We have to hand dig back here because of all the utilities. Even though they marked the cable, um, you still have to dig it by hand. It's, you just can't run the trench. There's too much stuff there. Sewer, power, all that stuff is in here. So we have to dig by hand. And, a little bit tougher keep your smile and keep digging hey just a quick note about live help video consultation via Skype or FaceTime we can help with project planning answer any question you have about a French drain or any drainage system use the website sign up online so if you need to use your pick your Maddox the Maddox is really cool it's got a big spade at one end this is about four inches wide at this end and it has a pick at the other end if it's really hard soil you know where you've got really hard clay or lots of tiny rocks then you use this pick just to break it up or you could use this now we use the mattock end of this spade right here to actually cut roots and we can cut a root just like that with this this thing's really great doesn't have to be real sharp it's more of the weight and the angle that you hit that root that you break the root off then you come back with a trenching shovel you can see Chuck scraping it out. And you can see that big old rock right there, right beside the trenching shovel, that orange thing. These rocks are hard to get around. Sometimes you have to dig the whole thing out. But he, he broke that up. You can see another rock laying there. And you can just come back through and just scrape it right off the top. You may have to go back and do it again, but it's the best way to do it. Remember, keep your smile, laugh, joke, cuss if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> And you'll get through this. We're almost done. You can see the sump basin over there. Um, we're about eight inches below the original inlet. We'll bring all this water from this side of the house on the, the driveway side. We'll run some easy flow, which is the French drain, and a couple of catch basins here. So remember how this system actually works. Let me, let me go over it with you real quick perforated pipe French drain this is French drain and it's really cool because it's all contained what this is is four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam packing peanuts although these aren't regular peanuts these are really dense and they won't crush or anything but they allow water to pass through it's also encased in a fabric which keeps the soil out so as groundwater rises okay that's usually the problem in most places groundwater rises up it goes through the voids of the aggregate which is the, the styrofoam peanuts the packing peanuts and then it goes into the pipe which has holes all the way around it perforated pipe that picks up groundwater catch basins they grab immediate surface water runoff so as water comes you know down from that little garden bed down into our trench it'll drop into the catch basins and then of course it's carried away through the system two things that you need you've got to have 
some type of uh, water collection that's picking up the groundwater. That's your French drain. And you also have to have the catch basins. Very important. Catch basins, immediate surface water runoff. So when you get those big two and three inch rainfalls, that water has a place to go right away. And then as, as it rains for several days, that water starts to come up underground and this system kicks in and takes that water away. Okay, so we've got this the whole install, the excavation portion done. Now we're gonna backfill. And you can see what we've got going on over here. We've got the peanut pipe, which is our French drain, and the catch basins. And that's picking up subsurface and surface water. I explained that earlier. Um, remember how it works is the French drain picks up subsurface water. As water comes up groundwater, it floods through the aggregate into the holes of the pipe and is carried away. Catch basins collect immediate surface water runoff. So you got the best of both. You need both of these for your system to work. Over here on the carport side, you can see what we've done. We've trenched the line through here, we've got some easy flow. Remember I explained how that works. I'll explain it one more time because it's really important that you understand this. <clears throat> this is the French drain. And even though we're not using gravel, this is a newer version of that which works extremely well. This is four inch perforated pipe surrounded by styrofoam packing peanuts. They're very dense, not the regular type. They don't crush. That's your aggregate, just like the rock would be your aggregate. Water will flood up through that aggregate into the holes of the pipe and be carried away. The, the catch basins, there's one there, and there's another one over here. They pick up immediate surface water runoff. As that water comes across the ground, it's gonna drop into our basins and be carried away. We're gonna use the soil to grade things into the catch basin. Remember, there's two of them. So we'll grade it both directions and force that water, surface water, into the catch basins. What's been happening is water floods across here and it went underneath of the awning there, underneath the home, and it's causing you know, a great deal of problems with mold and mildew and rot, you know, all kinds of things underneath there. So rather than go underneath, we decided to do it outside. And the biggest problem that they have is there's no gutter on this awning. And so the roof water just pours into here as well as all this water. You can see how high the ground is over there all through this area. Remember, this is a mobile home park and this is the lowest portion of the whole park. So it's picking up, you know, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of square feet of all these homes. They have no gutters. All that water comes over here and has been collecting right here. A real quick tip. This is perforated pipe with a sock around it. If you're going to use this and you, you know, what I'm doing is I'm putting a piece of perforated where it goes under the sewer because it does have a little dip in it there and we'll be able to pick up even more groundwater because it's a little deeper right there. Um, just, just a little section, I guess it's about down to the end of that dirt, 10 feet of it. But make sure that your fabric covers your fitting because if you don't, you know, dirt can get into those holes. So make sure you cover that up. Okay, so we're gonna drill the inlet. Remember, we're going lower than that original one. So we're gonna come somewhere down here. There we go. And that is a four inch hole. It's a four, actually four and an eighth inch hole saw. And that's gonna fit the outer diameter of this uh, corrugated pipe. What we do is we put a little slice right here, squeeze it together, slide it inside and it'll expand and then these ribs lock it in place. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we made a slice and I'm just going to squeeze this together. Then I'm going to force it through that opening. It takes two hands here. We're going to force it through this opening. And you can see it coming in here to the pit, right down there. I need my other hand. So you can see where we brought it through, right here, and here on the other side, where we brought it in. And I'm gonna take some roofing tape and seal this hole up. Roofing tape works really well. It'll keep that nice and secure for hundreds of years. And here's where we discharge. 
<clears throat> this is a three inch fitting with a grate. The sump pump's gonna come up and push the water out through here. We always put a set screw in here because if you don't, it's gonna pop that right off of there. That pump is really powerful. So we brought all the water out front and it's gonna definitely drain the areas that we were working on. However, because they've raised this road up here, this water will sit right here by the van. It's gonna to have to, you know, this is the best you could do unless they come back and redo something with the road. We can't trench across somebody else's property. Down there by that light post, there is a storm drain, but we can't cut across somebody else's property. Plus this belongs to the, the association and they would have to get permission to do so. But all the water from the back and around both sides is now going to come all the way out to that discharge and flood up, out, and over to that storm drain, which is really perfect to keep that water from you know, flooding. This area back here was the main concern, and it's because, number one, there's no gutters, and number two is that they're the lowest spot in the neighborhood. <laughs> so we added the cat space, and you can see it's a lot lower than where I'm standing, and we'll grade that both directions from the center of this mound, it'll go that way, and this way, that'll pick up the surface water. Remember, subsurface water is very important. You don't see it, but there's tons of water that moves underground. Got it all backfilled, comes all the way around. Well, I guess we don't have it all backfilled, we're taking a break. <laughs> and comes around, I showed you how we tied into the sump basin. Put some duct tape, I'm sorry, some roofing tape onto that hole right there, and we're all set. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.